Welcome guys to another World War Marvel. As you know, I'm your channel host, Adam, and today I am here with a tactics video. Uh, it is going to be a new little segment that I'm going to be running just to make short videos to sort of focus on the various characters that we have here in Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, I want to sort of, not that I'm super good at this game, but I want to sort of show what my thoughts, or share, I shouldn't say show, share what my thoughts are on the characters uh, and tactics that you could use throughout your, your game with them. Uh, so I'm going to look at the different tactics cards, their abilities uh, for the, the models, as well as abilities of other models that can be interacted with. Um, and maybe some good uses for these models throughout the games that you play of Marvel Crisis Protocol. So the first tactics video that we're going to focus on, I should say the first character that we're going to focus on today is going to be Crossbones. Uh, Crossbones, I just, I don't know, I love the model itself and he just reminds me, and I think I've said this in other videos where in battle reports that I've uh, played, uh, or games I've played, uh, he just reminds me of like a, a, a slow burning fire or a volcano. You know, it just slowly builds up, but then when he does erupt and he gets all that power on him, he is a beast to take out. Uh, I shouldn't say to take out, but a beast to deal with because he can deal a ton, a ton of damage uh, for being a three threat model. So. Without further ado, I'm going to show you guys the cards. We're going to, uh, his card. I have like a little demo board set up uh, that we can sort of, I can use to uh, show different abilities and what I mean uh, with it, uh, sort of like a play style. So anyhow, let's get right down to showing you uh, the tactics or discussing the tactics for crossbones. First off, the crossbones model. Uh, it is a pretty sweet looking model. So a friend of mine, Ian, uh, ended up painting him up for me. And uh, he basically, as you guys know, if you've been watching the content uh, from the beginning, once I got the box, uh, Ian did the five villains, if you may say, uh, and I did the five heroes. Uh, again, that's just a matter of opinions and perspective, really. But uh, so that is the crossbones model. They did a great job just making him beastly looking like those biceps and legs like he's just gonna tear through somebody so that is the crossbones model uh and what if i had to sort of put like a trademark role to him what would he be if anything i would say he would be not a tank like uh for a battlefield role but more like a a damage output or a damage um uh output type person uh and so like just because he's gonna take uh, a bunch of damage, sure, but he's going to dish it out that much more uh, with his uh, attacks and stuff like that. So, let's look at his tactics cards before we start, not his tactics cards, his actual card uh, before we start getting any further into this. So, you can see that on his healthy side, he has six stamina. Uh, he moves short, uh, which will come into the tactics later on, uh, because that can be a hindrance, but it can be negated with a few things. Uh, and then size two, cost three threat. Uh, he has four physical defense, two uh, energy, and two mystical uh, or mystic. He has a strike attack, uh, which is range two, and then power is five uh, and zero cost. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt. So that's like most of the strikes that you see uh, in the Marvel Crisis Pro Call game. Overpower is the next attack. Uh, it costs or has a range of three. It has a strength of five and a cost of two. So after this attack is resolved, place this character within range one of the target. And then if you have a wild, it has throw. If the target character is size two or less before damage is dealt, this character may throw it short. So that is pretty cool. We'll come back into details here momentarily. Uh, his superpowers, he has an active one, hate maker. So the next strike or out overpower attack made by this character this turn adds three dice to its attack roll. Uh, in inured to pain, inured? Yeah, well, yeah. If this character would suffer damage, you may it may use this superpower, reduce the amount of damage suffered by one. So it is reactive power. You can only use it once uh, per attack, obviously, because uh, you can't stack the superpower, so uh, it costs one to do, and you lower the damage by one. And then he has aggressive. After an attack targeting this character is resolved, this character if this character suffered damage, it may advance short towards the attacking character. So you flip the side over, 
to the back side, the injured side, the first change that you see here is the stamina goes down by one, but everything else is pretty much the same uh, on the card. So, what tactics would I do with him? Well, let's look at his weaknesses first uh, before we get into the tactics. A, his movement being short. He's going to take quite some time to get into position. Uh, so that can be offset, like I said, uh, by aggressive and some other little tricks that I have with tactics cards. Uh, but it is definitely a uh, hindrance when a lot of other models are moving like medium and long. Uh, they'll just be able to out move him. And so if you don't want to deal with him, you basically don't attack him with anything. Don't cause any damage to him and then just move away from him and, and so that's how you can easily avoid him at that point in time. Uh, again, unless you have means of bypassing his short movement. Uh, from there, actual attacks wise that he's weak against are the energy and the mystic attacks. Uh, only having two defense for both of those, that is uh, gonna severely, severely where you wanna focus on, uh, or what you're gonna focus on for taking him out. Uh, so in one of the battle reports that I've uh, played, I was using Captain Marvel, and uh, I was using, I think it's her rocket punch in binary form, and like I one-shotted him, basically. I'm pretty sure it was her rocket punch, or maybe energy blast. No, it was Rocket Punch in binary form, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I uh, was able to one-shot him and, and knock him out. Or sh I should say daze him, I think, with one shot. Uh, just because he doesn't have a very high energy defense. So characters like Captain Marvel, uh, Iron Man with his energy attacks. Uh, you're going to look at Doc Ock. Uh, or even Modok with his mystic attacks are going to be... Uh, you know, where the, the people that to watch out for when you're using crossbones because they will be able to dish you some damage and uh, you're not going to be able to do much about it. Uh, so the next uh, uh, next section, so we did movement and everything else, uh, his defenses, uh, tactics-wise, um, or I shouldn't say uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, and so let's get into his attacks next. So the strike and overpower, so that's pretty good. But let's pair those off with Haymaker. So Haymaker increasing his dice pool by three. So his strike can all of a sudden go up into uh, eight dice uh, or even uh, his overpower power into eight dice which is absolutely fantastic and huge <clears throat> um and so like you're gonna pack a punch yes it's gonna cost you four power to do if you do, do it with a strike or six if you have for the uh, overpower but my goodness eight dice is insanely 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 good and so if you, uh, when you're using the overpower, um, let's actually, let's look at how you can overcome said uh, movement restrictions. Uh, so there's a couple of tactics cards. Uh, I think I got three or so um, tactics cards that I, I pulled out that I think would work really good with them just to over offset uh, his power and stuff like that. So first one here is escort to safety. So when an enemy character, uh, when an enemy character uh, targets an allied character within uh, another allied character within range three of the target may spend three power to play this card push the target allied character towards the or the yeah push the targeted allied character towards the other allied character short if at the end of this push the target character is out of the attack's range or the attacker's line of sight the attack action ends if the attacker's activation uh, if it is the attacker's activation and the attack did not target multiple characters they may make another action. So basically why I chose Escort to Safety as a good card that you could be able to use uh, for uh, crossbones is basically if you set it up, so say Spider-Man is his ally and you know he's within range three and Captain America here is uh, attacking crossbones and like Spider-Man is all the way over here somewhere. Um, basically what you can do is spend the three power on uh, on um, Spider-Man and have crossbones move short towards uh, Spider-Man. So again, it can be like that 45 arc basically or the 90 degree arc. So like you're, you're moving quite the distance. So that's gonna help get them up the board if you position it properly uh, as well as maybe protect them from extra damage from the target basically if you can pull them outside of the line of sight and everything else. Uh, you have Modoc's tactics cards 
aim lackey. So Moldock may spend three power to play this card. Choose another allied character. That character may perform a move action as an additional action during its next activation. So I believe this means that you get an extra movement, free movement, uh, or additional movement next round. Uh, so I would almost say that would give you three actions. Uh, three... Yeah, three actions in your turn, but one of them has to be movement. So that's going to help uh, the slow crossbones get across the board. So that's that's going to be super, super helpful there. Uh, I'll save that one for last. You have drop off. So when an allied character with the flight begins a move uh, action within range two of another allied character of an equal or smaller size during its activation, they may spend one power each to play this card before moving the miniatures. So you're looking at using, say, Iron Man <clears throat> or Captain Marvel uh, with crossbones for this to take effect. Uh, so when the active character ends this move, place the allied character, being crossbones, within range one, which is an inch of uh, the model. So, and then it may perform uh, one of its attacks that has a listed cost of zero. So in this case, you're going to be doing the strike. So if you can get, say, Iron Man or Captain Marvel to fly up within range of a uh, an, an enemy, then not only are you going to be able to pick up crossbones and bring with you, uh, but you're also going to be able to hopefully get him to do a zero cost or his strike attack up against them. So if, if crossbones, for whatever reason, is sitting on a ton of power, uh, he can use his um, uh, his strike. Actually, you can't do the haymaker because it's an active power. It has to be your turn. But either way, you're going to get an extra free strike out of it and uh, hopefully get him up board that much more. So you have a one-two punch. So this just goes with making him into a damage dealer and output, in my opinion. This is really good for any any model whatsoever, but uh, I think crossbones will definitely benefit from it when you stack everything, um, such as like Haymaker and, and Strike and that. So when the active character targets an enemy character uh, in, with an attack, the target character is with range two of an allied character. Those allied characters may spend one power each to play this card, add two dice to the attack pool. So you, all of a sudden you're jumping up. If you have the power to do this, that is, um, you're jumping up to like a 10 dice strike or a 10 dice overpower. Ouch. So potential for the for a one attack knockout right there with uh, crossbones. Then you have Gamma Launch. So Gamma Launch uh, is unaffiliated and it's active. So if Hulk, so again, you're using now Hulk with crossbones, is within range two of another allied character that is not holding an asset or civilian token, he may spend three power to play this card. Place the al other allied character within range five of its current position. So basically, say crossbones is, is up a little bit higher uh, further than the Hulk, so like, you know, uh, two, three inches away. You're then moving crossbones, you know, five, range five. So like, that's a huge, it's like 10 inches across the board. So that's going to be a benefit to these slow crossbones and really overcome that weakness uh, and allows them to get into a uh, position and into the action that much faster and makes them that much more of a threat. So when he is in the action and is that a uh, threat, um, one of the things that he would be good at is holding objectives. So like a, 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 a you know, a central objective where you know there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, contention for it. Uh, the reason being is because of the aggressive ability. So basically every time he's taking damage, he gets to move short. So even if somebody throws him and he takes damage, uh, most, well, I can't say most, but some throws, like I'm seeing a lot of short throws uh, with like Spider-Man and, and what is Carol's Danvers throw? Uh, she's still medium, but uh, it allows him to sort of get back into position even after taking the damage or being thrown and stuff. So like he's just going to be one of those guys that will just not stop and just hold that central objective uh, or the contested objective uh, and be able to do, deal out a ton of damage. So I think, um, yeah, so like as an example, let's say as an example, we got Captain America over here. I'll show you what I mean with some of these. So you got your overpower. Uh, dice? I need dice. Give me one sec. Alright, so I grabbed some dice. Uh, it's one thing that I forgot. So we're gonna do look at his overpower ability at this point in time. So say he's facing off against Captain America. Uh, he is within range 3 of Cap. So let's just go like this. Uh, see, we put him right at range 3. Like so. Um, it's gonna have like... He's gonna have, um... 
eight dice to do this. So, or sorry, five dice, plus we're gonna use his overpower. So it's eight dice to do this. Uh, so basically the boosted up overpower. So actually let's just not do the haymaker with the overpower. Let's just do the plain overpower. So he's gonna have five dice creating the dice pool. You're gonna roll these and the, you're gonna obviously do all your, you know, re-roll crits or add extra dice for crits. Uh, you're gonna modify your own dice and everything else. And so with this roll, you see that I have a wild, three wild symbols and a hit. So I have four successes. The cap has four, uh, four dice to defend. So the cap gets three plus a crit. And so he gets three. So Cap's gonna be taking damage uh, and from this automatically. But the overpower effect, here we go. So after the attack is resolved, or sorry, with the wild effect, throw. If the target character is size two or less, which the Cap is, before damage is dealt, the character is thrown small. So say Cap is holding an objective when you're in range, you can throw him uh, whatever objective it is, it doesn't matter. You can throw him small. And it doesn't say that... Uh, that it's directly away or uh, towards. So like at this point in time, you're basically choosing where he's gonna be going. So like, let's say Cap gets thrown over this way and he's gonna hit or just be thrown into the, you know, this terrain piece over here. So he takes obviously damage from the collision with the terrain piece. He takes the damage from the actual roll itself after his defenses and everything else. Uh, and then he's throwing. So that's after damage is dealt. So after the attack resolved now, place this character within range one of the other. So say there's an objective somewhere back here behind caps, you can basically put them within range one like so of caps, uh, just within an inch or on the other side of the objective. So you're gonna use that to overcome his, uh, his his slowness, his speed, uh, which is really his one weakness. But like once he gets in there, he's just going to obliterate and wreck face. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So like that's, I would be doing uh, overpower left, right, and center with uh, crossbones just to help benefit getting him into position or even throwing people out of position. Um, you know, that's that's about it. So like really use uh, use crossbones in my opinion to hold objectives to be in that center of melee, uh, in the center of uh, uh, contention, uh, or in contention for the objectives, uh, have them dealing a ton of damage, as well as soaking up damage to to sort of be able to move, uh, well, you don't want him soaking up damage, but like, if he takes damage, he's gonna be able to move into position better, um, and then use those tactics cards to help overcome his uh, lack of speed. Uh, and like like I said, so again, I'd be looking at one, two punch for extra damage output, drop off, aim lackeys, escort to safety, and gamma launch to help get him into position. Um, he is, like I said, he, he, he when he goes, he goes, and it is super, super awesome to see. Anyhow, guys, that is that. Uh, check out our Patreon link in the description of the video down below. Uh, it allows us to continue doing what we are doing here on Blackfire Productions. Uh, if not, uh, well, to our Patreons, thank you, uh, as well as to uh, anyone that might be interested. Thank you for checking it out. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ignite your...